All right, here we go. This is a much awaited conversation. And I, you know, premised uh, this week earlier with uh, Krista Pepper. Uh, and you are uh, in a league all by yourself. And so I thought having Ms. Keola Reigns in a conversation about our history together, but also how you've evolved since we've known each other into something that both of us I'm sure would agree is very important during this time period yep. with the holidays and just some of what you are uh, becoming globally famous for. So maybe, <laughs> yeah, you are, you're, you're globally <laughs> famous and you're about to become even more famous right now. So I'm excited for you as we uh, also people can start to look for you on CBS when we do our show. So you are, you know, part of the crew. Yep. Uh, Over here at M2 Pro Design, but Keola, let us all know. Tell us how do we know each other and what what the hell happened here? What the you... hell happened? Oh, what the hell? I gotta what happened? I gotta take it all the way back to the Yelp search. It was a it was a search in the summer of 2010, and there's some reason certain things just stick in your mind, like you remember the moment that it happened. Um, I was looking for a trainer. I was getting ready to start grad school myself. Um, I have a bachelor's in kinesiology. So I was training people and I realized really quickly that if I wanted to be really good, I needed to have my own coach, someone who had far more experience, expertise than I had. That's something that I, I saw other people doing. And I always had this kind of vision of my body in the back of my mind that I didn't know how to create. And even with the degrees and even with the certificate, I still wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And so I said, you know what, it's time to get a coach, find somebody who knows what they're doing. And right away, and this was 2010. So this was pre oh, like pre Instagram, Facebook, yeah. was not, but Instagram wasn't quite out yet. No. Um, and so Yelp was the place to look for people. 
And I remember doing, you know, personal trainer in Long Beach, first one that popped up M2 pros. And I'm like, okay, let me check them out. And then I just see body after body after body. Then I see it was you and B. And I was like, this is it. I don't think I even scrolled down anymore. I was like, that's it. Here we go. Let's go and do, I think it was like, you know, give a, a free class. You can try a class for free. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I found you. And uh, I've been here. I've been back and forth ever since. But the truth is, I've always been with you or you've always been with me, whether I liked it or not. <laughs> been with me and so I I just knew you know when to come back when life was getting lifey and I would slip and fall on my face you would either call me out of nowhere which I don't need I don't another one of those moments that I was standing on my sister's balcony in Long Beach I had and we'll get into this but I had just gotten a DUI and I was trying to get my shit together and just kind of like pacing back and forth. Like, what did I just do? What, what is going on? And you, you didn't text me. You called my phone rang. I hadn't been training with you for probably two years. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh, why is he calling me right now? Like I'm in trouble. Like, does he know? How did he find you? And you said, Kiola, this is your subconscious calling you. What are you doing right now? And, you know, I fumbled over some words. Oh, I'm at my sister's. You know, I, I, I um, yeah, I'll come see you soon. 
and made my way, you know, back into the studio. But it was one of those moments where I was like, wow, this is way deeper than the gym. Like this guy really knows what people need he you know when to touch in with people and so uh, you know I, i'm here for life but that, it was a yelp it was a yelp search and it was the results that i saw and then it was the experience you sat me down for breakfast after i was uh maybe a month or two because i was expressing interest in competing and this and that and you said whoa 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 like don't get ahead of yourself girl <laughs> you if you want to do that cool but you have a long way to go so let's talk about you and your goal. Why do you want to do this? Let's talk about, you know, who you're doing this for. And that's when I realized like, okay, this is not, this is not just lose some weight and get on stage. I'm going to learn something much deeper and have, you know, been coming back ever since 13 yeah. years like that. Yeah. It's been a long time. And, uh, you know, to connect what you had happened, had happened at that moment, with a bigger, you know, like competition to me at this point, I, it was a big thing yeah. for myself at a certain point, but I, I can remember how that just overwhelmed the thought process. And now when you look at what you're actually doing now, you right. are serving people on a far greater level, helping, you know, people with something that we both share, you know, yeah. the substance or the alcohol, but also in my case, substance abuse and all that. Uh, and then how, it's prevalent. It's prevalent in almost every single gym I've ever been in. And so it's almost like going to church. You yes. Know? I'm like a reverend or I might be like a probation officer for some. Yeah. Reverend and, probation officer combined. Oh, yeah. Hugs and kisses. Not so much, but yeah, you've managed to get through all of this process and uh, now you are working with the public. Right. On a grand scale, and I can see in the background you got all the stuff on the wall, all the papers, glass, all of that. So it says, "I know my shit." But right yeah. now, what have you created for yourself with the, uh, you know, sobriety and substance abuse action? Oh man! So first thing was facing facing my shit, accepting, you know, got getting in trouble with the law, and losing everything you know like I didn't a slap on the wrist wasn't enough for me you know me I'm hard-headed like I'm like I oh, <laughs> yeah I'm hard-headed so I was like well let me try if maybe if I go this way and I only drink on the weekends and with these people and I only drink these things maybe and that wasn't it you know I just had them making a negotiation yes that's what that's called yes the deal they always fell through yeah. and I always ended up in places I didn't want to be do you know, people I didn't need to be with. And that went on for, for years. I, my first drink was at 15. I started recovery at 35. So I was like 20 year up yeah. and down. I'd have these good periods and then I fall. That's like I told you yeah. when you, when I would disappear, that's when I was out trying to do my thing. And, um, in January of 2019, I just said like, this, this is it. I, I can't, it's not working anymore. And I had opened a gym. I got my master's degree. I was doing all the, the things. I was checking all the boxes, but I had this thing I was carrying with me, you know, this weight on my back I was carrying with me and started to lose all that stuff, losing, you know, not making any money or just blowing money because I was irresponsible and everything that you could imagine going wrong went wrong. And even then, even then, I was like, well, I'll, this was October 2018. I said, I'm going to quit. I'm going to go get some help, but I'm going to wait till January. Again, that stubborn kind of mindset. So January rolls around. Thank goodness I survived 90 more days of doing that. January rolls around. I get into my recovery journey. Um, fast forward to last year. So about three, three and a half, four years into recovery. I had been very open about my journey on social media. That's something that will always be who I am. Like whatever I'm doing, yeah. good or bad, I'm telling everybody about it. Yeah. Finally, I'm doing something really good and people started to notice. So different companies started to reach out to me and ask me to host meetings um, in their spaces, because now we have more than just 12 step. There's all these other ways you can do recovery on your phone. You can do it just for women. You can do it just for under 30. You can do it however you want. Yeah. And because I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed that I slipped, fell, you know, scraped my whole self up. I am proud that I came 
came back, you know, that I bounced back. And so now I get to work with people all across the world. I have clients all across the world and we're working on not only recovery, but because of my background in fitness and nutrition, everything is rooted in movement and food, using food, using exercise, using goal setting and mindset to keep you sober because it's, you cannot just, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink. I'm not, you got to come up with something else. You got to come up with something else that's, you know, going to fuel you. And so I have this career that I never imagined that I would have. Um, I get to, you know, make my own schedule, do a lot of work from home. Companies are reaching out to me to do partnerships. And even in the last year, since I started this new round, this, you know, third time's a charm, basically (laughs) third time's a charm. Um, it's just coming in like rapid speed and people are seeing like you, you get sober. Awesome. But you get sober, you get fit, you get healthy. Then the doors are, you know, floodgates are open. Yeah. 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 So, and it's, 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 you know, manifesting itself with all these opportunities. And I saw that you're getting ready to do an event here shortly, which we'll talk about, but I also had you prepare a couple of uh, images so that people can kind of understand. And I say this to people so that when we start, I'm like, find a picture of your former best self. Right. Let's go there because we know what's possible with that body. And then let's find out where the wheels fell off and you burned down the house yeah. and did what you did. And then here's that body. And now we're on the other side of that with where you are now getting ready to do this you know, program with us on CBS. So, and a host of other things. So, you want to share those images real quick? Yeah, we'll let me show that. you. I'll show you where you got me. So let's see. You got me to that picture on the left. Yeah. Right? So this was me, 2012. Um, I was 28 years old, a feisty, 20, or 29, something like that. Um, and I came in around 177 or so probably like 32% body fat and got down to here, which was 155. Maybe We're going bit. back there, by the way. We're yeah. going back there. I, I'm so, I'm yeah. so ready. Everybody, everybody wants to talk you down off the ledge, but I'm telling you, no. that's your body. And um, we were doing, we were doing boot camps. We were doing the hills, the stairs, the sand. I saw a picture of you today using yep. the stairs around the uh, convention center, which yep. is one of my, that was my stair climber. So when I didn't have it in my studio, so good. Okay. So go ahead. And so then I said, okay, you know what happened? I actually took a job that summer at a dive bar. So I would kind of manage myself, you know, back and forth, um, off drinking, not, you know, back to drinking on and off the wagon. But then the dive bar job is where it this the real downward spiral okay like you say you know <laughs> keep your foot off but keep your foot on the gas i put my foot on the gas in the wrong direction i was going in the wrong direction so yeah. here we are two years later that's two years of drinking almost every single day yeah. eating fast food um i got uh, i went from 155 to two two twelve. okay and that's around this time so you know just the interesting thing is I somehow always have a little kind of small waist, but this is just liquor. This is just all yeah, alcohol yeah. in the body. So, and this is this is just two years, but you know, my question for a lot of people and the viewers would be like, you know, yeah, okay, you had access to this. Yeah. And at some point you recognize clothes are fitting different, life's a little different. What had to be the break point for you to, you know? go and say, I need help. Was it the DUI or was that when did that happen right after that? Or did, um, the DUI was the spring after that. So 20, that was like summer 2014 DUI was spring 2015. And I quit drinking for eight months after that on my own, because I still, you know, I said, I I'm in grad school. I have a master's degree. I'm, I'm not too that smart bad. for that. Yeah. Too yeah. Smart. I'm not that bad. I knew I was going to get caught at some point doing, you know, the way I was moving. And I just thought, okay, this is my, this is my sign, you know, from above that like, you got to get your shit together. And so I did for eight months, but because I didn't have any kind of a system in place, I didn't have a mentor that I was working with on that specifically. I tried to do it on my own. I went to one meeting and I was like, 
whatever. I'm I'm not that bad, you know. I was that bad. Um, so got back, you know, started like we said, the negotiating. Well, if I only drink wine and I only drink on Saturdays and I only do it with these certain people at these certain then I'll be fine. But that's bullshit. You will be. I am telling you right now, if you had a problem, you, that is your thing. Like you don't need to touch it. It, It's, it's my kryptonite and I'm not trying, you know, like I want to be superwoman. I don't want the kryptonite. So I kind of spiraled back again, back into those same habits. And, um, in 2018, October, 2018, that was when it was when I saw my gym started to, I was losing a hold of things. I was losing this basic responsibilities. I wasn't taking care of things because I was hung over or too tired or my anxiety was through the roof. Yeah. And so I was, I was wearing a mask. I'm running a gym, waking up at 5 a.m. You can do it. Come on, let's get this. And then as soon as that door would close, I'm pouring wine into my water bottle. Yeah. yeah. And I got... I got sick of that. I got tired of that. I knew again, having someone like you call me out of the blue and then seeing friends of mine competing. And I'm like, what the, like, damn, I'm supposed to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I just kept seeing that I, it was me that was getting in the way. And if I didn't do something about it, I was never going to have the experience that I know that I'm supposed to have. Yeah. I would never be able to experience that. And so I just said, I have nothing to lose, literally. Like at that point, I'm already losing everything. So walked into a space and started that whole process. And it's the best decision I ever made. Yeah. Like it's sobriety for me has given me the ability to stick with this goal that we're working on right now. The yeah. discipline that it takes to to drop a hundred pounds, like after having a son. So I had my son in 2020 and you know, cooped up, thought the world was going to shut down. I was just eating everything in the world. I was just a little roly poly pregnant girl. Like I remember seeing you on live one day. I was like, Emil, sorry. (laughs) I mean, I'm eating everything. Um, and you know what? My son is here. Great. He's healthy. Fantastic. But again, I knew there is no way I am staying in this body. Like I don't care if Kim Kardashian and all her sisters are fat. I'm not doing it. Like it's just not for me. Yeah. And it was, it was, uh, my, my 20 year friend, Sadia, she's, she started training after she had her second son. And I was like, I said, Sadia, you think I could just go for a guest pass? Like, don't tell him, don't tell him it's me. Ask if you can bring a friend. She's like, if I ask him if I can bring a friend, she's like, he'll, he's going to know it's you. Like, what are you, we're talking about Emil here. So I said, well, ask him, go ahead. And I walked in, I was like, here I am. <laughs> so we got home. And then I haven't, I haven't left since. A yeah. hundred pounds down. Yes, and it's, it's pretty amazing to be able to still continue this journey and then to be part of your life. And, you know, Sadia is a good friend and yes. you know, she too has had her, you know, moments. And uh, as we helped her get ready for her first show, we didn't even know she was pregnant. Yeah. Uh, damn, we're, doing everything. <laughs> we're trying to get you lean. We're trying to get you peeled up. And she was uh-huh. like pregnant. So yeah, we did, we did fine. But now we're here and we're right, right at a hundred pounds, and you're what's what's the weight right now? One, what is it? Uh, one sixty six. Okay, so your best is one fifty five. So that's eleven pounds. That's easy, girl. Yeah, eleven pounds is easy, and you're I, you're working. Like yeah. when you were saying what you were saying in that post the other day about you know uh, their antisocial tolerance, and like I'm. When you guys are in the gym, it's like work when you work, play when you play, but don't play when you're working. And it's like all of you girls stand out 100% over other people that I see running around in other gyms. Yep. You know? So it's like you guys are, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you've been able to do and to to put it together, to do this thing, serving you know humanity, men and women, but dealing yep. with this special population that just has a difficult time admitting that we are powerless to mm-hmm. some aspects of you know our lives and 
I've always believed that once we get the knots untied and we can figure out why we're using whatever we're using for a coping mechanism, whether it be alcohol, drugs, sex, gambling, shopping, all of the above, and we finally get sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I'm glad that you've been able to put this all together and do what you're doing now. I want to flip the switch into high gear. Yeah. So that we can really set fire to the planet because I know with what you know how to do and your your power, you know, uh, academically and to be able to articulate things and thoughts to people that are stuck in that mindset. Well, so-and-so doesn't have a degree or so-and-so doesn't have a body like a bodybuilder and so on. So, so. Whatever story they've got going on shuts them down from their greatness. So yeah. we're going to smash all those barriers between you and Krista Pepper and myself we're going to handle a whole lot of people. Yeah. And World I, domination. Yeah. Well, not, I'll go that, I'll go that far. 10 million people is not difficult to do. It's not difficult at all. So where we are right now and the impact of what this conversation is helping people to understand about yourself, your journey and all of the girls on the team, everybody that I work with has got some kind of similar little story like you have, when you put that out in the press release, people can type your name in, Keola Reigns, you'll pop up and they'll get some of the backstory and see your video. So anybody listening to this is not, you know, familiar with it, they can go there, but they can also reach out to you, yeah. right? Do you have a website? Yes, KeolaRains.com. I make it simple. Yeah. Very simple. There you go. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll tag that. We'll put that in the show notes, but I think it's... uh. High time, like we've been slacking. And this 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 thing that we just had, like 2019, I lost my mom and lost a lot of relatives, you know, right in that same window of time. And I, and I don't say that as a boo-hoo, but it was really weird how that that situation caused us to really put put the foot on foot on the gas and take yeah. off. And all of us have grown tremendously. And now after being at uh Self-made training facility here in Long Beach on Pine Avenue. It's not a commercial, but here we are. We're doing our thing and we're getting ready to do a TV show. So I'm really glad to be able to include you in that. Your journey is powerful. And I just, I, I applaud you. Thank Love you. you lots. I think this is, this is a good thing. We're going to do, we're going to do magnificent things in this next few years. So I'm looking forward to it. Any yeah. Talk about this next event that you have coming up. What is that and what what is that about? The Sober Season Kickoff? Yeah. That. So what I offer is a virtual experience for folks to be able to get support, get resources, um, encouragement to be able to make it through the holiday season. So we do that quarterly. And I also have the Sober 90, which I'm teaching a course and that is a 90 day course where you're getting 13 weeks of curriculum with probably about 400 people in that. Yeah. Um, so we have access to not only meetings for sobriety support, recovery support, but you're also getting a 13 week course led by four coaches and you get to interact with other people across the world that are in that program. That's a part of a community that's called the luckiest club. Uh, when people, one of the things people say, oh, is it not, it's not free. And I said, well, was your alcohol free? <laughs> <laughs> your alcohol wasn't free. So no, um, there's a, there's a cost to it. It's very affordable. We have early bird pricing until October 9th. Get yourself in there yeah. um, and just experience freedom. That's what recovery and sobriety is. It's freedom. That is what I am. I'm free to do whatever I want to do. I don't have to plan and strategize around being sick or whatever it is, I get to do what I want to do. So look for the Sober 90, the Sober 90 um, through the Luckiest Club. Okay, so we'll tag all that to people. And, uh, you know, again, here's the holidays. This is the time of the year that I tell everyone to double down, you know, get the gym membership, come in on the trials, meet you. If you're yeah. happy to be in the gym at the same time, it's Interesting how some people eat me. Yeah, don't talk you know, to me. Don't talk to me. Yeah, don't <laughs> talk to me. I'll go crazy. I'll go crazy. Don't interrupt the flow after the workout or send a DM. You can do all that, but just not. No, no, not during the workout. In any event, uh, I know tomorrow we have a training day, 
uh, early, and we we keep the same schedule that we've had for several decades, um, just just to serve the greater amount of people that come in during that time of the day. But Keola Rains, I appreciate you. Thank you. Love you lots. I love all the success that you're having and the, the next level of success. I'm willing to bet your sober 90 and the other uh, event, we could probably 10 times that before January. So let them know we're going to, we're going to put the foot down on the gas pedal, try to build that up. Then I'm doing the same with my crew at, you know, the gym M2 pro design. And uh, I want to see everybody succeed. This is a mountain of work that's available. There's an abundant amount of people that need help. Don't be bashful, reach out, talk to either Keola or myself or any of the team at M2 pro design. Keola rates. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to shut it down, okay? Okay, bye. bye. Okay, let me, I'll be able to edit this.